It's time now for perspective. Europe's stone megaliths, built thousands of years ago, have long attracted tourists and archaeologists alike. The vast majority of them mark burial sites. But exactly how they came to appear across such a large region in a relatively short space of time has been the topic of much debate. One theory suggested that the practice originated in the East and spread with migrating priests. Another, that different communities came up with the practice independently of one another. But new research by Dr. Bettina Schultz-Paulsen, a prehistoric archaeologist at the University of Gothenburg, concludes the practice actually began right here in France. Well, we can speak live now with Dr. Bettina Schultz-Paulsen in Gothenburg. Thank you very much for speaking to us here on France 24. Could you start by telling us a little about what exactly these megaliths are? What do they look like and what purposes did they serve for the people who created them? A megalith is a megalith is coming from the Greek uh, megalithos, big stones. These are stone structures uh, and there are tombs mostly, dolmens or passage graves, gallery graves we have. But we have also standing stones in Europe, so-called men menhirs, and uh, we find them in stone circles and also arranged as alignments. And this, uh, the function of this uh, megaliths we don't know yet, as well. it's some kind of ceremonial meeting places, it's called. Now, before, but there are many tools. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you there. Uh, before you embarked on your research, what was the general consensus as far as how these stones came to appear all over Europe? Uh, what do you, uh, you mean with consensus in the last decades? Absolutely. Uh, uh, in the last decades, researchers thought they have been emerging independent from each other in different regions. So in, in northwest France, in Portugal, in Ireland, in Denmark, in, uh, in the Mediterranean. And this was thought because uh, they thought uh, people were pressing from the uh, from the Near East, also together with the Neolithization, people were pressing the people against the coast and they were building megaliths as territorial markers. This was the last uh, research opinion. And what exactly did you find with your research? I found, based on 2,400 analysis of 2,400 radiocarbon dates, that the origin of megaliths is in northwest France and in particular in the region of the Morbihan. And this region was the center of the megalithic world, especially in the earliest megalithic phases. And uh, the societies there, they invented the technique, as uh, the architectonic, uh, as the technique to build the megaliths, but also to transport huge stones over large distances. And they had also an advanced boat technology, like it looks, to overcome long distances over the sea. And just how quickly do you now believe that these structures spread across Europe? I think in the first phases, I could narrow down a time interval of two to three hundred years. But uh, if I have um, uh, more grants to produce more radiocarbon dates, I can say this more exactly. I can refine this picture even more. Now, you've been talking about radiocarbon dating. Uh, for our viewers who aren't exactly sure what this process consists of, can you tell us a bit how that works? Uh, radiocarbon dating. Um, it's working as a, you can date in particular every organic material you find, as in connection to the megaliths are these mostly human bones. And uh, to explain this short, um, you know, um, C14 is an unstable uh, uh, isotope of carbon and it's coming over photosynthesis to living organisms and as soon as an organism as an individual uh, or is dying, it stops taking up radiocarbon and uh, a radioactive decay is starting. And we can measure this decay and so we can calculate the time uh, when an individual died. Now you mentioned yeah. a little earlier that a lot of these structures are found along coastal routes. Just how significant is it that so many of them are found so close to water? Uh, is very significant because I really think the spreading went over the seaway as it looks and um, yes that this were really seafaring societies this is why they were settling along the coasts. And what does that in turn tell us about human development back then? Um, it shows us as a, what it was showing today as a until today, we thought really uh, megalithic <coughs> societies, they were uh, associated to a Neolithic lifestyle. That means they were sitting in their villages, they were unmobile, they were sedentary. 
And now we see they were much more mobile than what we thought. And also over the seaway, they were maritime mobile and uh, the technology was much more advanced than what we thought. And Europe was at this time a place of intercultural exchange, as of extensive intercultural exchange. Now you have spent uh, the best part of a decade on this research. Why has this question specifically fascinated you as much as it has? Oh, this fascinated me from my very early days as a student because it was obvious that uh, megalithic structures there look similar all over Europe and also that they were orientated in the same way to the rising sun. So there must have been some connections and uh, really to figure out how are the relations between these regions. This was really fascinating, but there are so many remaining structures. We have at least 35,000 left remaining. There may be much more. And uh, it's it's a huge effort, you know, I had really to compile this data, I had to go into excavation reports, I had to go into literature, I had to travel a lot, I had to visit the structures. So it's a lot of material you have to work with. And that leads me to my, my last question. Just what's next for you research-wise? Are you going to leave these megalithic structures and go on to a new project? What's coming up next for you? Oh, I will not leave the megaliths because... <laughs> Now, I'm just at the beginning, you know, I could uh, really develop a rough framework and now I want to refine it as I want to continue really to define the relations between these regions to see was these migrations of uh, indigenous societies taking up the idea of the megaliths. So there's a lot of research to do now, especially on megalithic seafaring also. It was opening completely new research fields for us. Well, we look forward to seeing what you come up with next. Dr. Bettina schultz paulsen prehistoric archaeologist at the University of Gothenburg. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to us here on France 24. Thank you very much.